Belair, and welcome to the Loaf of Bread GA podcast, slicing into the GA of the past, present, and future. Join me, Jason Keelan, as we cut into the largest loaf of bread known to mankind. Hello, Diagwitch, Bonjour, Nihau, Konnichiwa, Guten Tag, and Privyat to you all wherever you're listening in. What started as a message to 10 clubs has now expanded to more than 50 clubs globally from all continents. The journey through Loaf 2 GA Global continues this week as we move on to our next destination in the GA world. So come with me on the GA journey of a lifetime and meet clubs from Canada to Argentina, South Africa to Gibraltar, Bermuda to the North Pole, New Zealand to Kuwait, Knoxville to Qatar and literally everywhere in between. So grab the passports, grab the bags, it's time to go. On slice 22, I travel back to the Middle East and to the small nation of Kuwait to catch up with Abby from County Down and Lucy from the Isle of Man. We chat all about life in Kuwait and what it has to offer, how the girls ended up in the GAA, training on the school rooftop, Lucy's Premier League netball career and being thrown into midfield because she's tall, rivalries within the Middle East and beyond, and of course some of the key questions like choosing between Irish Jew or Kuwaiti Mahbous, camel racing or horse racing, and Kuwaiti sporting hero Fatih Camille or down hero Benny Coulter. But first as usual, let's take a trip into the country and city of Kuwait and see what this part of the Middle East has to offer. Bon Soltos. I land in Kuwait International Airport, which is almost a century old and originally used by the British as a stopping point to India and beyond. Today we are in the Arabian Gulf, on the very tip surrounded by Iraq and Saudi Arabia in one of the world's smallest nations. More than three quarters of the just over four million inhabitants are of foreign nationalities. The country's history is both ancient and modern in a strange way. In the pre-oil days before 1938, more than 25% of the population were musicians, and many playing the sort of traditional music you hear in the background. The country always acted as the stopping point for the India Mesopotamian route for traders and explorers. In fact, around the region in the early times, the first maritime sea explorers used to work. When the original Dilmun people declined in the area, pirates took control before the Babylonians took over under the rule of the recognisable name of Nebuchadnezzar. But like many nations of the world, earliest mentions of Kuwait come from the explorer Ptolemy. Around the 16th century, Portugal took over before a century later the ruling sheikhs in the region founded Kuwait City as a fishing area. By now, much of the Kuwait trading was with the city of Basra, now a major area of Iraq, and sadly, now an area which is all too familiar to many, from the Gulf Wars and Saddam Hussein. After oil was discovered, Kuwait entered into what they now know as their golden age. In the 50s they were the largest oil exporter in the Gulf. Things continued to run and in 1961 they became independent and by 63 had their own constitution, the first Persian state to do so, while also promoting liberal attitudes to attract newcomers. But the 1980s brought many issues. The Iran-Iraq war broke out and when Kuwait supported Iraq, Iran took offence. The 1983 bombings shook the world when embassies, industrial plants, electrical centres and many other targets were all targeted in the country by the Islamic Shia militants. Kuwait leader Emir Jaber had an attempt on his life soon after. 17 were arrested and imprisoned in Kuwait. In response to their arrest, multiple incidents took place, most notably a series of hijackings, all demanding the release of the now known Kuwait 17. Flight 422 in 1988 remains the longest hijacking in the history of the world, lasting 16 days and spanning across several countries. In modern times, Kuwait boasts a very strong scientific side, including introducing the first ever code in space project for pupils in the country. There are also many plans for space projects in the country which are currently ongoing. As for tourism, despite being small, Kuwait has quadrupled its tourism income in two years. The avenues provide the shopping outlet for those interested, while the Souk al Mubarakaya is the more traditional way of exploring the finer things of Kuwaiti life. The beautiful Grand Mosque and the iconic Kuwait Towers provide wonderful photo opportunities too. 
Kuwait Harps was founded in 1997, but reformed again in 2011, with the ladies' GA starting two years later. Two ladies' teams and a men's team now grace the club, and they operate out of the Middle East GEA County Board. The current panel boasts players from Ireland and the usual nations, but also Somalia, Sudan and several Kuwaiti locals. In 2019, the men's social team won the cup at the Bahrain Games, and the rivalry with the surrounding Gulf nations is still as strong as any county rivalry here at home. With two third place finishes for the women's social and intermediate teams, it is the club's best GA return from a tournament and it shows their progress. And so it's very much onwards and upwards for Q8 GAA. So let's find out more about the club and Q8 Harps GAA as we head over to the capital and meet with Lucy from the Isle of Man and Abby from County Down, who will fill us in on all the goings on in the club. Hey Abby. Hey, uh, how are you? Not too bad, how are things? Not too bad, not too bad. I think Lucy is en route as well. Oh, yeah, oh, there she is coming. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Lucy. How are you? Hi. I'm okay, thank you. How are you? Sorry. I... How are things in Kuwait with you guys? It is. Yeah. Warm. It's hot now. <laughs> really warm. Yeah, it's roasting here as well. It's like, it's about <laughs> nine, nine, nine degrees, I'd say here. It's roasting, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah every uh, time I like my mom, my day is gone, she's like, oh, well, it's um, freezing here. I'm like, Great, I'm, 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 yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. Like, yeah. I hate seeing I hate seeing your face because you're tan. I'm like, yeah, sorry, mom. <laughs> yeah. And how did uh, how did Abby? How did you end up out there? Hey, uh, well, you know what the job situation is like at home. And, yeah. um, I went to uni, and so um, I didn't fancy. I didn't want to stay in England at the time. I was like, now nah, I've had my fill of you guys. I need to. I need. I need some space. Um, but I didn't fancy subbing at home because there's just no jobs. Um, so I thought why like well basically my dad was like you need to decide what you're doing next year because I made some comments about pots and pans and he was like you really need to get everything sorted so naturally I went into a tailspin stayed up on like tears to 5 a.m and applied for Kuwait and he was like that's not really what I meant I was like well I've got a job interview next week so we'll see what happens and then yeah here we are two years later yeah that's mad yeah I was kind of I was years ago like whatever it was 10 years ago when I graduated I was um it was kind of the same. I was I was halfway out the door to Yemen, <laughs> which may, may not have been. Now looking at it, it might not have been the greatest choice in the world. But uh, interesting. It, yeah, in the end, um, in the end, I I ended up getting a job here eventually. But yeah, I know what the yeah. Now, it just, the, it's all about like, being in the right place at the right time. Like I was. Yeah. It's the job. same for me as well. Yeah. yeah, I was looking at jobs last week and it was one job out and it was genuinely four people and they needed to be like a level one coach experience with a football team, grade eight music experience with an orchestra head subject. I was like, that is not one person. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. But... It basically needed to be a Nobel Prize winner since mm-hmm. you to get that job. <laughs> basically, I was like, right, okay, I'm going to close this now because it's just going to stress me out. Yeah. I was texting Lucy being like, Lucy, I'm never going home. Like, I'm never going home. I'm here for life at this rate. <laughs> Yeah, that's what uh... I worry about as well because I'm I'm from the Isle of Man. Oh, okay, um, yeah. Yeah, so the job situation at home as well for me because I'm secondary PE. Yeah. And at home there's six secondary schools. There's nice. like fifteen female PE teachers. Someone's <laughs> either got to retire or go on maternity leave. Yeah. That's yeah. literally all I'm waiting for. Yeah. That's Which that's is basically a pleasant thing, but, but yeah. yeah. So it's one of those just kind of waiting for the right moment, but there never is one. But hey ho. And how did you get from how did you get from Douglas to Kuwait? Um, so I went to uni in York um, and then I did my PGC in Durham. Um, my husband's oh, yeah. actually from Newcastle though. Um, oh, okay. but I worked in America. Um, and a girl that I worked in America with worked came out here and worked, and she was in primary teacher and she um messaged me one day and she was like oh there's a secondary PE female position come up just thought I'd let you know because you'd said about <laughs> international you, you know you like international teaching just thought I'd let you know on the off chance and I thought sod it why not what's the worst going to happen and here we are three years later <laughs> that's amazing yeah that's that's brilliant yeah I uh I haven't been to the Isle of Man before it's it's one one place in the world I haven't been I was uh I randomly like on, on holidays in China in 2009 and 
the family that we were kind of sort of on holidays with were from the Isle of Man and mum and dad and, and two daughters and they were they were such good fun as well. So yeah, we got invited to the Isle of Man, but we never actually made it out that far, unfortunately. So I have to ask if you're is your husband a Newcastle United fan or a Middlesbrough fan or a Newcastle United. Oh, we all have our problems, I suppose. So <laughs> <laughs> I can just see Jack like right now if he could hear that. <laughs> is it for like yeah, we we all we all have issues, but look, not everyone not everyone can, can support a good team like Man United, I suppose. So, um, I won't talk, I won't talk too much. So about I support. That. Oh, is it good? Yeah, okay, we'll keep you on the call. So we we don't need your husband; he's fine. We we'll keep the Newcastle fans out for now. So, and uh, Abby, how did uh how do you know the club started out? Was it there when you guys got there, or? Yeah, so it was founded in 1997, um, but after like some issues and stuff everything stopped and then they went again in 2011 a uh, the ladies football team though didn't come to 2013 and then since then we've kind of been working our way up uh kuwait though i don't know what because i know you like said you've gone international before but with kuwait we are like we are well different. known yeah we are well known for being the oddball of the middle east and um, <laughs> we go to tournaments and they know us as the non-irish team wow, because okay. on the team men and women there's only six of us currently that are from north south and um, we have a very small minority of irish people actually on the team we are the and only of those team. irish people i think there's two people that played before yeah exactly like i i have never ever played i will not lie and say the only reason i went to ga here was because of fomo all my friends were going because <laughs> yeah. like, i come from um a very like Basically, an orange order family in okay. Northern Ireland. Yeah. And um, whenever yeah. I, uh, whenever I told my dad about the guy, he was like, "You're not going to go, are you?" I was like, "No, of course not." Man. And then here we are, two years later, on the board. And my dad, my dad works down south. He works in Dublin, and one of his best mates sends him everything that I post on the Instagram. He's like, "John, there's Abigail." And my dad, do you ever think your daughter would be someone who played the guy? And my dad's just like, "Sure." Shop. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. It was definitely one of those things that my family were just like, "What?" I was like, "Yeah, need something to do because in Kuwait there's literally not." Yeah, there isn't a whole lot. Okay. Like the boys yeah. play a lot of social, like a, a lot of social soccer, Football. but it's just not sporting options really for girls. Um, you haven't tried a, a, a lot. Of are, you haven't tried trap shooting yet. No, famous sport of Kuwait apparently, from what I from what I understand. <laughs> Um, they have one. They have won a medal in shooting. That's the only medal, Olympic okay. medal they have. <laughs> that's that's a start in a way. Yeah. We thought quite wanted to go to the shooting range, but we just never. With curfews and lockdowns, we've just never made it that far yet. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like we're the only yes. we're the only team that goes to the tournaments. That we've got Kuwaitis, we've got Egyptians, um, a lot of English people, Americans, Canadians. Like we yeah. have a real variety of people on the team. So whenever and we, we like people are just like what like what like who are these who are these kids yeah. are like, because the fuck, literally the fuck let these and, yeah literally and you go and the other teams especially the ones from dubai are it's like you've just picked up a plane from ireland and they've all come over here like they're yeah. totally yeah. Irish. and then yeah. there's, there's just stuff i talked so, to them yeah i've talked to the jamira gales and yeah, I have a couple of others coming on after you guys, I think, hopefully from Dubai in that area as well. And I've, I've had Oman on and probably Qatar coming on. And, um, and yeah. you will not find one person, one non-Irish folk <laughs> on uh, the same. Have I? Uh, I can't remember. There will be a couple, but they're like yeah. the rarity, whereas with us, the Irish are the rarity. Yeah. And it's just because the expat population here is is very different. Like there, yeah. there aren't that many as many expats at all and the majority of expats are indian filipino then you know there's not there's not actually that many of us here yeah <laughs> in compa- like in at all it's also a dry country so i would say that's yeah. probably got something to do with the lack of ash focus <laughs> yeah. there's not much turf out in kuwait anyway to be to be taken up is there what you make of it we have we've made yeah. the best of it but it's not yeah we have it's yeah, definitely not definitely everyone's yeah. But yeah, fair it, enough. It's, yeah. it's about the people that you meet as well. And like, like for us, that was like going to GA was a massive thing. That's how me and Abby know each other. We didn't work at the same place. We didn't know each mm. other before we started football. And then and now, our, I've got, now I've got a room in their house. Like that's all you need to know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, it's like our fine. adopted child. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Um, how did uh, how did you take to the skills, Lucy, of uh, of GA? 
Um, so I teaching PE, I absolutely love sport anyway, no yeah. matter what sport it is. Um, and then I've played netball and handball and football Brilliant. before. So for me, it was just an amalgamation of a few sports. So I really enjoyed it because it was from netball, it was catching and moving and that kind of thing. But then from football, it was using my feet. Then from handball, it was like the defensive tackling kind of aspect of it. And the same with basketball. Um, so I really enjoyed it because in some games, there's stuff that you can't do, mm. but you can do in another game. And GA yeah. is kind of like a, an, a merge <laughs> of them all. So yeah, it's it's really nice. And it, it was something completely different and it was a new challenge and I really enjoy it. Um, Very cool, yeah. I, yeah. I know the what, what kind of level of netball and stuff did you play? I know the only one I probably know is like Gary and Phil Neville's sister, I think, played netball for England, didn't she, or something like that? Yeah. Um, so she used to she used to coach um, one of the teams and stuff that we play for, and the okay. woman who's just stepped up as um, the coach. And I used to coach for some of the teams and stuff. So I played Premier League in um, university in netball. So yeah, well, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. Um... At least yeah, one of you good. in the house has has a good Premier League reputation, anyway. So, well, so. <laughs> exactly. Right, right, the guy who walked out of the kitchen behind you a few minutes ago certainly hasn't a lot to shout about. <laughs> I'm afraid. So, um, he's pretty good at GA though, as well. He only yeah. he only started in September, and he's pretty good. So we it's can't sign so him up. Too much. Like a lot of the newbies, especially the boys, had the clay ground flying up and down the pitch. You like. Yeah, it's typical though, isn't it? Yeah. I did actually text um, Newcastle upon Tyne GA as well, but half an hour back from the Met. So uh, I did not even know they had a GAA. Neither did I. Yeah. Apparently, Newcastle have got a GAA club. <laughs> yeah, I know. He you knows anyone in the club. Can you tell them to message me back so they might come on? <laughs> he there. just went, what? <laughs> Yeah, there is a Newcastle upon Tyne GA club on Instagram. I, I found them. I, I think at this stage I found every club in the world. Like, there's some that have turned up. Like, you guys might think that you're like kind of, oh, you know, maybe they don't know we exist. Like, you guys are are like A-level celebrities compared to some of the clubs that I've uncovered from underneath <laughs> the woodwork of of places in the world. But yeah, um, Kuwait is certainly, is certainly well known compared to some of the stuff that I found. Newcastle upon Tyne was a funny one. That was definitely a, a unique one. I yeah. didn't expect to come across Newcastle GA Club. I wonder I just, if it's like linked to one of the unis. It's probably just Alan Shearer just going around, just trying to, you know, kick, he, he's got a kick in the ball over the bar. So it's keep his just career just going. Knocking it. Yeah, keep his career going. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. What's the membership like, Gabby, at the moment then? How many have you got? Um, With COVID, it's it's been it, hard. This year. A lot yeah. of the team have dropped off from last year because... We have like we've been we've had restrictions from the start of the year. Although we haven't had like full on lockdown like the UK and stuff. Yeah. Um there was a period of three months we weren't allowed to train. There has been like um rules on curfews. So there rules have on we've, gatherings. We've lost, mm-hmm. Yeah, gatherings and stuff. So we've lost a lot of people in that sense. Um but last year we had two women's social teams. The men had a social team, all be it. We had an were. intermediate team as women's yeah. Well. Nice. So like we had the numbers um this year definitely not the same extent but the problem There's... is well a lot of a lot of the schools didn't bring back their staff so some of our members are oh. currently stuck in the UK and will come back next year it's all been hit and miss but every training we've had at least 16 to 20 pretty good yeah it's more than some we've, clubs I've in our to, yeah. like group we've got like 60 but not even all of those are like paid members because they just haven't come this year but at the start of the year they were like yeah put me in the group sort of thing um but yeah so there's it, as Abby said like it's it's just been one of those years that's been a slow year mm. and a lot of people who thought they were going to be playing then we had some people lose jobs because of what happened in Q8 and um, like all the schools have been completely online this year so some people okay. aren't here some people got sacked because schools just didn't need them and um, like a lot of different things happened that meant people didn't play and some people don't want to come and play yet because they're nervous still about covid um so yeah it's just it's just kind of been one of those but hopefully with if things settle down hopefully um with the whole covid pandemic fingers crossed um mm. that Shall come end of august september we'll all be here and we'll be able to train as we would and we're just hoping that we'll be able to travel to the tournament because yeah, for us here yeah, we don't have anything yeah whereas the teams that are in dubai there's like several teams in dubai 
and they yep. can go to Abu Dhabi and they can all within the UAE they can all go and see each other and go and play against each other whereas here we we have our club mm. and that is it and that you know yeah. that, that's it there aren't there's not anyone else to have friendlies against or anything like that yeah it's very um, similar like to a man yeah partners, like need to come into play because they've closed the our airport to expats so we can leave but we can't get back in there's seven yeah. weeks of isolation after so like if there's a tournament on a weekend we can't go because we obviously have work the next day mm. so there's a lot of things into play that we need to kind of fall into our favor so we can get going next year hopefully the tournaments will be up and running because they're such like they're such so good, good. um <laughs> everyone lives yeah like, yeah so hopefully that next year it'll be smoother and things will in somewhat go back to norm normality yes what what is the tournament setup like when you guys is it the kind of the guys i know in, in oman were saying it's kind of like you all meet up in one place kind of big massive weekend yeah. is, is it like that yeah, yeah. so the, basically there's usually um a tournament in dubai in october and um, so we i went to that um not yeah back in 2019 Oh, yeah, it was like a long time was, ago. Yeah, yeah. forever ago. Yeah. Civilized. Yeah. So there was one in October, and that was just the women's intermediate team. So our men's are only in social. Um, they're very, very good. They're very they good. Just, they have in previous it. years been able to regularly field a team. Yeah. yeah. Um, so they they had to come drop down from intermediate into social. So we had a women's intermediate team go to that, and then in the November was the Bahrain tournament, which was so fun. Okay. We took. Did we have two socials? No, one social. No, it was a, a ladies' social team, the ladies' intermediate, and then the men's yeah, social. And then team. the men's social, and the men's social won, um, which was really yeah. cool. And then oh. the, it all happened. It all that all happened at Bahrain, um, like the rugby club there. So mm. basically, we all went. All the games were happening. There was social pictures. There was all. There was like three different pictures, and um, all the games happened throughout the day and everything. And then basically. The social element is still at the rugby club. They have the bar, they have a band, and everybody has a very merry time. <laughs> yeah, so it was great. So fun. Right, yeah, you guys. And then the next out. day, yeah. yeah. And then the yeah. next day, there's a brunch, and they put on like a discounted brunch um, for everyone, and then you get the plane back, basically. Sounds good. You guys Quick didn't go out. Uh, you weren't at a tournament in Ila in Alain or anywhere like that before, no. And um, so the one? one in January was in Rack. Okay. And um, so that was in Rack in January. Um, that that wasn't like the same kind of atmosphere. Again, though, we only took a women's intermediate team, mm. um, because some of the um, tournaments don't allow for so the socials because they don't have the pitches or the amount of space and things. Yeah. Um, and because it's the intermediate teams that are the only ones that go towards like league standings. Um, so we took an intermediate team for that. That was the last tournament we had before, before COVID hit. So we missed Whoa. the March Abu Dhabi one, which is a bigger one yeah. again, because that yeah. allows the that social was, teams. That was the weekend that QA went into lockdown. And yeah. I was meant to, I flew home to Dublin on the Wednesday hmm. and we were meant to fly out to Abu Dhabi on the Thursday. Hmm. Wow. And it just went straight into lockdown, was it? Yeah, so I got a phone call. I was at my friend Ian's house. He's from Mayo. And we were about to order Taliban and um, we get a phone call from our principal being like, guys, q going into lockdown from 12 midnight tomorrow. You have to leave the country. So at this point, there were two flights out to Dublin, one that was four hours later and one that was at half 11 just before the lockdown. I yeah. was like, what? That doesn't go. I'm going to be stuck here. So um, yeah, left Ian was like, see ya. Went back, uh, packed a bag, literally shoved the most random crap in a bag i took home like waffles and chocolate bars but i vital, didn't take home my work no, no, literally, no, no. I, took home, I took home a bag of bikinis and my mom was like i like, what are you doing I it's like, ireland well, i might get away i might you get away wear it. in the summer hindsight would have been a great you did thing. wear it in your garden because you facetimed me from the garden anytime, so you did wear any it. time it was more than 10 degrees i was like so i was <laughs> with the laptop on my, on my lap wow. but yeah That's we had no idea what it was going to be like. Um, and yeah. Lucy had to stay. Their school didn't yeah. let them leave. Whereas our school did job. not want responsibility for us. So we were Whoa. out there and then didn't get back for seven months. Jeez, My that's... school didn't let us leave. And they, the Isle of Man said, okay, on the 24th of March, we're closing the borders. If you don't get in before then, you're not coming in. 
So I haven't been home since December 2019. Wow. Because I, con- I said to my school, I was like, look, can I go? And um, you're in a position that you know the rest of the school year is going to be online. You know that the situation, we're going into full lockdown or whatever. And they said no. Holy crap. It's too did, uh, does the, like, did the lockdown and stuff, does that like on the GA wise, does it affect any sponsorship or anything you have? Or do you have we any? don't have sponsorship. <laughs> we don't have okay. And We've been get, uh... contacted by like some people in the past, but the, the problem is like a lot of the time the sponsorship um doesn't doesn't fit with Q8. Yeah, yeah. so basically we had um a pork Ooh. company from Ireland want to sponsor us. Right. It's pork is illegal here. Yeah. Yeah. And like it's not a case of like in Dubai and the UAE, you could you can still go into certain yeah, shops and buy it. Here it's it's literally illegal. Yeah, like I've, if you I've have heard, it, yeah. it's um so okay. there's a issue that then we tried to get like we have an Irish bar now um in Kuwait. Um there's nothing Irish about it. Yeah, at literally all. nothing. It's run by Filipinos. Like yeah, I don't even it's... think there's like an Irish person who works there. Um so we like we've asked in certain instances, but they just like people here aren't interested. Like sponsorship to be fair is not a massive thing because Kuwait Kuwaitis are loaded, like they don't need sponsorship. Surely they could like, loan they you a, bar- a barrel of oil or something, though. Oh, I swear to God. Like they get paid to do everything here. You're like, come on, help us out a wee bit. But we've been yeah. very lucky and like very fortunate that the Middle East um gets quite a lot of grants from yeah. uh, Gaelic uh, yeah. like at home. So they so just distribute money um to the clubs in the Middle East. So we've been very lucky that we've been able to get that. And membership fees, we just have to rely on that to be honest. Yeah. But, I feel like, yeah, I feel like, like I'm I've, I missed the boat a little bit in this now that you say it. I should have started playing a game on this called Guess the Name of the Irish Pub because everyone has an Irish pub. What's the name of your one? Is it the Irish Pub. Yeah. <laughs> what is yeah. it? The, the Irish, Irish Pub. pub. Yeah. Right. Okay. That wasn't going to be my first guess. there's absolutely nothing Irish about it. No. I don't Literally even think nothing. Irish on the menu or something. Like, I mean, not yeah. Okay. Fair enough. So sponsorship at the moment. So if you guys got your own jerseys and stuff then or how does it work? Yeah, so we've got our own, we've got our own tops and stuff, and we just haven't, um, we just haven't got any sponsorship on them, um, because we haven't, haven't had any sponsorship. As Abby said, that we've been lucky with the Middle East board grants, and um, hmm. we, I applied for as Chevers and I applied for the grant for this year, um, and we we received grant to basically help us pay out pay for some of the pitch fees and stuff because the pitch yeah. fees here are so expensive i was that was going to be like, my next thing ridiculous. yeah do you guys are you like in the same boat as a lot of places where it's like a local park and you're you're trying to fight like almost councils and stuff yeah so we don't we don't hear the facilities are very very limited we there's no grass i saw your your instagram videos of the the training yeah um, yeah it, so it looks like a five aside pitch, pitch with metal around it <laughs> it's so basically it's yeah, oh, on a okay. school roof Right. And it's an astroturf <laughs> that is not a full size pitch. Okay, that's no. definitely but it's a first. the best we can get here. Yeah, I haven't heard of any team training on top of a building yet. That's a new one. So it's yeah, it's, it's funny because if go. there's a lot of people running, the floor bounces. Yeah, I remember right. the first time I trained there, and I was like, I thought I was going to like faint because of the heat or something. And then I was like, Is it just me or is the floor moving? <laughs> and yeah. we were all like bobbing. So yeah, it's, and then, um, like when we when we get to tournaments as well, people are like oh my goodness, the pitch is so big. Because we tell people at training, we're like, you know, this isn't the size of the pitch. You're like, yeah, whatever. And we're like, no, no, no. This isn't the size of the pitch. Yeah. Um, right. But we just, we try and make the best of it because like there's there's nothing much we can do. Nice. This made me absolutely cackle a while ago. I got a message from someone coming to Q8 next year. Oh, they were yeah, asking really about, funny. Yeah, they were asking about um, Gaelic. They were asking about the Irish community, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, well, Irish community, not so much. As I said, there's like six people on the Gaelic team. Yeah. Um, and it's also like, oh, I'm really into fitness. I'm into the gym. What's the what's the club gym like? I was like, club gym? Hey. Mm, mm, yeah, you might want to rethink that whole club gym thing. I was like, eh, we don't actually have a club gym. We currently train on the uh, roof of a school. If you want to join a gym, here are some beach club recommendations. I was just like. Honey, when you come to Kuwait, your eyes are going to be opened. Yeah. <laughs> like, She's going to get yeah. a fairly rude awakening by the sounds of it. So show us the jersey. I'd be just of interest. So this, we got oh, it's um, quality. one it's of really our... Nice. Yeah. We've got the harp on the back. It's like, And the towers are on the front as well. It's very unique, isn't it? 
Yeah, so we had a competition a couple of years ago um, to design it, and that was the winning design. And then last year we did put um, on a competition for like a training top, mm. but obviously because of COVID, we people haven't. Just some happen. people have got membership, but we haven't made the training top yet because we're like, there's no point. And um, but we're gonna get that going for next year, so then the people who have the kit already can get mm. the training top. So we things. usually do membership. So when you pay when you pay for membership, if you haven't already, you can get your playing top your playing kit okay. so your set for tournament and then basically if you already have your shirt because we they usually change the kit about every three years mm. but we've not even had a full season in that kit well, because of covid so there's yeah. no point there is absolutely no point changing it so everyone that already has a shirt like me and abby would then with our membership then get the training top and people mm. can other people can dry, buy the training top if they want but like just kind of as like a nice gesture it comes with membership yeah, um, I, I was going to ask as yeah. well. Just it's normally kind of the last question, really. Ask is like to promote the club and stuff. But can your stuff be bought on O'Neill's? If anyone like myself who collects like random jerseys yes. and stuff, can it be bought? Like because yeah. I always put up ah. links to it. So yeah, yeah, um, yeah. They have some of the stuff on O'Neill's. Uh, I actually bought a pair of the skinny trackies whenever I was coming back <laughs> because we don't have them. We don't have them here. But I got them on the O'Neill shop at home and got them sent to Newry. Um, but you can because I ordered my dad a top home because he's got a Harps jersey. The yeah, fit so we is have different like, online though, which is odd. Yeah, because he have ordered like a medium and it's big, massive. Oh yeah, they're tiny here. So yeah, no, I I like the look of it. There's something very Columbia 1994 soccer jersey about it that oh, I kind of let me really show drawn you the to camel you. tops. Yeah, okay. I was gonna go and get one. Go and get the camel tops. So we have okay. like these half sets. Oh yeah, wow! So this oh, that's nice. The only yeah, thing yeah. we'd have to change is make the camels a bit more yellow. Yeah. But the stuff is really nice. Um, yeah, it does. It looks pretty cool. It's quite it's quite unique looking compared to all the all the kind of general. Yeah, like when we go to see. tournaments and things, they we do our kit does stand out because it is very different. Hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. which I like. The rest of them are all very much navy blues, and it's quite hard to tell. It's hard to tell the difference between yeah. these two. To be honest, everyone yeah. knows that we're Q8 because we've got the bright yellow. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, they're like they're nice. I must. And then uh, does all the does all the money in general then go on a good night out in, in the Irish pub or where would it go? Uh, pitches, so at to the be moment, honest. the pitches, the, yeah, yeah, the money has mainly gone on the pitches because we haven't we haven't been able to do socials. We've not been mm. allowed. Yeah, <laughs> the, like everything's just not been on. Like we're trying to do a bit mm. of like an end of year thing, but it's okay. kind of waiting to see if if we're going to be allowed to do it is yeah. there going to be any restaurants open like mm. that kind of thing um this but yeah way at someone's house like that's that's what we're yeah. looking at right now pizza hut right. at someone's someone's flat um wrong are, pizza hut. Exactly. I, I went, <laughs> guitar, I went to guitar i went all the way to guitar to pizza hut so <laughs> it's <laughs> nothing wrong with nothing wrong with that whatsoever so yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't be um, i wouldn't be downplaying that of, at all one of those things and like normally we would have had quite a lot of socials like we could have yeah. folk parties, that sort of thing. Last mm. year, we had a couple of youth days as well. Um, yeah. Some of the grant went towards getting uh, getting the youth involved, but because of this year, we're, we're not allowed to do it. We're not allowed um, to do it. Kids are not allowed to get involved. In... And would, they, would the plan be to get a, a youth kind of set up going? Or... I An think actual... at the moment, in the position that we're in, because of the amount of members that we've lost to mm. the adult team, we need to put our focus back in again on the adult team mm. and like try and build that up before we look at getting a youth team again because again the thing is it's not like there's a load of expats here with kids yeah there's not a load of Irish families with yeah. kids it, the kids that would be doing it would be from here um, yeah, and, and obviously that's great to do, like get the we like basically tell our class right guys come on there's a thing that yeah. we want you to come to at the weekend can you tell your moms to bring you to support us <laughs> um it <laughs> is it's like all the teachers put out the words um, but there's just there's not the there's not the demand for it, and we wouldn't have anyone to play them against either. Like yeah. we have a lot, a lot of the kids here are massively into soccer, so there's like a Celtic academy, there's a Juventus academy, is there an Arsenal one as well? Like there's different. So soccer's much bigger, um, and they go on tournaments and things. But I don't even like we've never actually had that many people inquire about a full time. It would be great to do it eventually. It would just yeah. it would just take quite a few years to build it up. Yeah. And then the problem is you you've got to have Kuwait turnovers really happens really quick. Yeah. So like yeah. people will be here for a year, two years. Like the yeah. max most people stay is five years. 
like you've got some people that are that have been here 10 years or whatever mm. but they are the, they are the rarity yeah. and yeah. to get something like that running you've got to have the consistency of people wanting to keep keep that going which would mm. be great but as like as we said it kind of had started and then covid hit then we had someone step out of the position um of youth officer and then because of covid we just didn't need anybody else to take yeah. that place um, and okay. because it, it it's not allowed to happen so like yeah longer down the line when the adult team has risen back up <laughs> yeah because you know, COVID's had a hard hit on it it would be nice to get that going again just for the community within Q8 and for the kids especially to learn a new sport and get involved in sport and allow females to come as well because like there's not there's not really anything for for mm. young teen girls or even younger to play so it would be nice to do it for that reason um there's a couple oh, yeah. of other couple of other questions I kind of throw at a, at every club but um Judging by kind of some of the things you said, maybe the likes of uh, a club karaoke song and stuff might might or might not exist. Do you guys have one? <laughs> I mean, we don't. There might have been one in the past. We don't at the mm. moment. But that, things like that do happen. Like we do in the past. We've had like loads of socials and stuff here. Mm. We just haven't been allowed to because of COVID. And it'll be nice when things relax down and we're yeah. able to do all of that again. Um, like we've made the most, like we've definitely made the most of it, but as as I said, Barry is a piss up and we lead with that. We're like, oh, come to football. You'll have a great time. And the weekends are great fun. <laughs> great. Why not? On you come. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Yes. Um, do either of you guys remember, I ask everyone as well, do you remember your debut, Lucy, your first game that you got to play with the club? Or... Yeah, I do. It was in Dubai um, in the October tournament. Um, and... I was like, oh my gosh, okay, this is how Gaelic has actually played. Because as I said, we don't have any other teams here. So yeah. we, I'd only ever played at training. I'd only ever played against other people that were probably learning the sport as well. Yeah. I'd only been playing for three weeks. Um, the deep end, and, yeah. <laughs> yeah, literally in at the deep end, basically because I had a visa that would let me go in and out the country, whereas a lot of other people didn't. And I knew how to read a game. <laughs> nice. from playing other sport yeah and I was fit and they were like yeah cool you can play in midfield you're tall so you're going to go in for the I, don't, I still don't even know what it's called the throw the throw, throw in yeah, throw in it. yeah I caught the ball and I went oh shit now what do I do <laughs> and I was literally like just hand passed it off as quick as I could well, and yeah, then to a start anyway yeah yeah and then basically as the tournament went on I was like right okay got a bit more confident with it stuff and I and I did score a couple of goals and a couple of points um, in my first tournament so which was lovely um, on, yeah you didn't yeah. Hit, any, hit anybody or start any rows in true Gaelic football fashion no I didn't I got started on oh um but I didn't start it but you hit you hit back is what you want to say uh I, think, I, would have had to, I think JJ would have been in there like we would have been off she would have been gearing to go <laughs> Like claws, she, she is. She, I'm gonna miss her next year. One of the girls yeah. that's leaving, she's been here a couple of years and she plays in um in defense for us, and she is an absolute mm. force of nature. I was gonna ask because that's my next an question. Every club, every club has its stereotypical lunatic on the pitch, so this is obviously your yeah, one. Yeah. <laughs> Give the iconic line. Oh, what, what is she? I wasn't, I, I can't know you do it. What was it? it she I said, there, basically, I, I, I swear she said something like she basically said to one of the other girls that was defending, you're going to have to hold me back from this bitch. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't think I've heard like, that said because... in the GA pitch too many times, yeah. Hello. yeah. She's American. Where's she from? Atlanta? She's Georgia. a fierce American woman. Yeah. yeah. She Georgia. does deep, not deep take south. Any... Yeah. She loves it. Oh, like, I'm pretty sure she had the acrylic nails and everything on. Like, she was ready to go. I wouldn't have been surprised to be like, hold my earrings. Like, she has your back. I love her. I really want She's to meet her. Yeah, we're def definitely <laughs> going to bring her to Ireland and sign her up for the Westmead ladies team oh, here, I think. Uh, did you actually, Lucy, Did you, have you been given an adopted county or anything in Ireland to follow in Gaelic football? No. Okay, so time to, time to sign you up to the Westmead Brigade then. Welcome to Westmead. <laughs> Okie dokie, there yep. we go. The women are very good shirt. footballers, the men not so good. <laughs> but anyway, we're trying hard. Okay, okay, I'll support the women then. Jack yeah, can look. support the men because he loves supporting teams that are not good. Okay, well, we're not brutal, but um, <laughs> he does support Newcastle. Yeah, we'd, we'd be better than Newcastle. 
Oh, we've, I don't oh, know okay. if it would That's be. Right, we might be better than Newcastle, yeah. Um, the <laughs> last couple uh, have, Abby, I suppose, kind of your job in some way being the Irish person, but uh, have you introduced QH to Father Ted? Uh, to be fair, I have actually never seen Father Ted. Oh, I'm, oh. a really, really, I'm a really, really bad Irish person. Like, um, <laughs> whenever I arrived, the coach at the time, like, put us in the first ever training, put us into have you played, have you not played? So I naturally, coming from, quite a stereotypical Protestant Northern Irish yeah, family yeah. went through the I have never played before. She's like, yeah. what do you mean you're from Northern Ireland? Get over there. I was like, <laughs> no idea what's going on here. Like my best friend in high school, she played and people used to rip the pitch. They would call her Martin McGuinness and they would call me Ian Paisley because of like how chalk and cheese we were. Um, and I went to see her play a Gaelic match once. That was, that was my experience. I knew you had to like bounce the ball and then you had to kick it and you had to take a couple of steps that that was literally all I knew and I knew that she punched someone when I went to watch her play um and that was that was my experience um but I do try and like tell them certain like little slang phrases and I talk about Northern Irish food a lot because I'm okay. very loyal we're big foodies oh yeah good yeah I can, I can deal with that yeah. Yeah. I can definitely but, deal with yeah. that yeah I have a have you, Lucy? Have you have you watched much on YouTube or anything, or have you actually watched any games? No, so I watched some of the games um, when the like last season when the games because the games mm. got delayed and they got played like later yeah. on. Um, yeah, we and watched the final. We all came around to yours. We watched the final at mine. Oh, nice. um, and that was that was the first that was the first time I'd ever like sat and properly watched a full game, mm. and it's amazing because the game is so different. <laughs> to what we play because yeah. we play in tournaments which are smaller sided teams and, and they're seven minutes like is yeah. They're, seven, seven? yeah they're seven yeah. minutes and it and it's one straight half and it's it's a completely different game in a tournament setting for any sport you play and hmm. um, in comparison to a full length game and um, but then just how they what they do with the ball is a lot different to how we typically play here because especially the girls when we play here people typically don't have the same feet skills mm, as they do okay. hand skills because a lot of people haven't played GA before and most girls haven't played football before haven't played soccer before mm. most of them come if you've got English girls are going to know how to catch because they've played netball at school yeah so most of them their hand skills are a lot better than their feet skills. So typically we play a lot more of a hand passing short, sharp yeah. game than we do a kick pass game or a be real, game. real ultra we're more football. A, so yeah. We're, passing, we're more yeah. of a, typically in a tournament, we've been more of a hand pass and goals team, hand pass, okay. bringing it around the box, waiting for an opening and going for a goal. Um, but that's something that I'm <laughs> currently, when we go back, trying to be, work on and been working on this season is trying to become more of a point scorer okay. because we probably don't have any, we, we don't have anyone now. We lost a lot mm. of our intermediate mm. team. There is only me left. Wow. Well, the oh famous, gosh, there is actually only me left. The famous GA phrase, goals win matches. I think you should stick to that at the yeah, moment. So, yeah, so well, yeah. it's one of those, but then it's also like when 45s come and stuff, like, being able to score a point off them would, yeah. be, would be very beneficial. Mm. Um, so I've been kind of practicing mm. those and we've got a really, um, we've got a nice guy coaching called Darren. He is, he is Irish and he's been playing Unreal. for a lot of years and he's, he's been really, really beneficial to the club. And he, he said, he'll coach again next year. And he's, he's been really helpful because he's helped, he's helped a lot of people that are beginners or that are, have a lower ability to up their skill. But then he's also really helped, people like me who are trying to kind of look for the next thing. So yeah. that when we have some girls come in that are into intermediate team level that we can possibly look at, at, yeah, we might have to have this hand pass and short goal game, which is great, but also having the ability to put the point in if nothing else is going on or, and things it's like that, which is like a massive nice. thing. Cause we have like some fit people. <clears throat> we have people like me who cannot run the length of themselves. Um, <laughs> But, like, you think you're fit or, like, I genuinely, I have improved in my fitness, but I'm like, yes, I'm feeling good. And then I spend 10 minutes in the heat. I'm like, I'm tired. So, like, the heat, the heat, heat is plays a, a massive thing into it. Like, you, you think you are somewhat fit. Like, after, because Lucy's cousin's a P, like a PT and we both did our classes and stuff in the summer and mm. I genuinely felt 
the fittest I have ever felt in my life. And I came back to football and was like, I'm going to be sick. The <laughs> heat. Yeah. I was like, it is, it's, it's just so different. to yeah. Especially like here in yeah. September, it's like 46 degrees. I got yeah. out of my car today and it was 44 degrees at four, five o'clock, hot, 20 past five at night. Yeah, I've I've and walked into that a couple of times, and it's <laughs> yeah, it's pretty horrendous. I, I remember a couple of times I walked into that, like you know, I remember in America once in in Death Valley, and the same in Dubai, and it's you. I actually Hot put it off the plane. I thought I was actually standing in the fan of the plane. I was like, oh, I think I need to move out of the way here. I'm <laughs> in I'm, in, I'm in the way of something. <laughs> I'm in the jet, I think. Yeah, and no, no, I'm just I'm just in Dubai. That's all it is. Yeah, it's it's pretty. It's pretty torturous. Um, I can, I can. But most I, of us are in the same in the same boat, though. Like you have people who have kind of dibbled and dabbled in sports, like mm. go to the gym, blah blah blah. Like there's a couple, like me and Becca, both are much more into like dancing and stuff. So we've got like aspects of fitness, but I don't think bar our coach last year, we've actually got anyone who is the supreme for what? I was very that last year. <laughs> <laughs> like we had we had our coach last year she is the definition of yeah. a pocket rock she is okay. phenomenal um, she's she, quick super speedy she did she ever play like football at a professional level huh she played like uni level yeah okay. um that was last year that we had a lot of girls who were good soccer players which yeah. helped so yeah. we kind of we need to have a bit of a drive next year and pray that there's some, to get some sporty meat. people basically yeah some new meat coming into the country because that's that's also the issue with membership mm. we can't you can get people within the country to come when they start Kuwait that's the problem it's getting yeah. people who have been in Kuwait a while to get involved there's mm. always some like oh I don't know I don't know enough about you like, like we were having a chat with some of the boys some of the boys at the weekend and they were like oh but I don't know anything about football uh Gail like I don't know the rules blah 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 we're like yeah but we can teach you that can you catch a ball I didn't know the rules when I started yeah can you kick a ball (laughs) yes okay well then come like there's kind of like I don't know fog that people have like blinkers and they're like oh no I I couldn't play it and you're like actually you can so what we try and do is we try and nab as many newbies when they come in to be like okay here's something to do you'll meet you people um to try and get them but with the visa situation with schools not knowing the crack it's it's really hard like this year been coming in. <laughs> newbie wise we had yeah three new people on the team like it's just I there's think just so needs, many factors you'll have to adopt a lot of clubs we were talking about this a few who are struggling for numbers and we said now it might be a bit tricky for you guys given your situation but uh stand at the airports in the arrivals hall yeah create a beer and a football and exchange it for their departure ticket. <laughs> I just say, this is Honestly, yours. If you give me your ticket, you can, you can take this. We've instead. already been going wrong. It's like all the current members being like, right, what school are they? Cause majority of our team are teachers. That's teachers, just the yeah. way it is. Majority yeah. of people are teachers. Yeah. Uh, a couple of people work at the embassy, oy, but majority are teachers. So we're like, right, we've got this school, this school, this school, this school, this school. Right. So they can focus on this school. Yeah. You can focus on this one. Like you're going to just, Word of mouth, you're going to make these people, people in come primary, primary, these people in secondary. Like, yeah. 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 It's a. Uh... It's just about like nabbing them and getting them to come, at, like, and hoping that the the heat doesn't scare them off <laughs> yeah. in the fitness yeah. aspect. Yeah. But the are... people who spoke about it last year, like, had, had a wheel of a time. Like, as Lucy said at the start, like, our friend group, two of us worked at the same school, but the rest of us are, we, we met at football. Like, yeah. Yeah. That's the nice side to it, I suppose. Yes. Hopefully, though, the Irish the Irish do tend to melt a little bit in the heat, so you might want to watch out for that. They don't <laughs> they don't last very well. Um, but yeah, hopefully, the hopefully when all this gets back to some normality out there, you might get some kind of recruitment uh, process kind of going at so. the air. Even if it's the airport with a crate of beer and a football, it, it could work. You never know. Um, yeah. Non alcoholic beer. Yeah. <laughs> whatever. Whatever it is. Yeah. The, uh, the, yeah, to say that either. Yes, the uh, the last few questions are every club that I do, uh, I do like a quick fire round. It's not a history test, right? Don't worry. Of like, um, you know, your choice between 50 50 questions and they're like Q80 or something else. I won't lie, it was quite tricky to find some stuff to put into these questions because uh, Q8 doesn't have a monstrous amount of stuff. I really had to dig up some history books and stuff to find out what the hell was going on. So, um, yeah. I'm yeah, you might be, you might not be, to be honest. Um, we'll 
white dish fashion. <laughs> yeah, and Lucy, since you're from New- Newcastle as well, I'm going to I'm going to try and do my best uh, to change because uh, some of these questions to Newcastle team, if I can as well. Oh but, gosh, uh, Jack's from Newcastle. I'm definitely not, but. Oh, sorry, you're Isle, Isle of Man. Apologies, I'm Isle of Man. Man. Oh, oh Christ, <laughs> that's fine. even harder. Um, oh God. <laughs> Uh, I'll just maybe go UK. Q8 just cheese, keep it... Manx cheese, Manx cheese all the way. Q8 cheese is rubbish. I didn't know that. I've talked about this after. I didn't know there was Manx cheese. I do like a lot of cheese. I didn't know oh. such a thing existed. Yeah. Is it the made from. The de- it's so good. <laughs> it's not made from the three legs on your flag for some reason that you decided to adopt as a, as a kind of an island, the strangest flag in the world. Hey, I have that tattooed on me. It's no, the strangest. <laughs> it's the strangest flag in the planet. I don't know the what English- the hell. The English translation of the Manx saying is, though, whichever way you throw me, I will always stand. Is that where the leg so no thing what, comes from? Yeah, so it's that's the English translation of the Manx language of what it means. So Brilliant. it, yeah, it, whatever whatever life throws at you, you'll you'll always get up and always. Well, stand you've up just saved me so. a couple of minutes of looking it up because, ironically, if this is another coincidence in my life, the kids in my class today were asking me about the Isle of Man flag because there's a there's a world. <laughs> flags thing at the back of my classroom mm-hmm. and sure enough they were like why does this stupid flag have three legs on it and I was like well I know what it is I know it's the Isle of Man but I said I can't answer the question of why it's got three legs so well, there now, you go now I've, I've got a, I've got something to write down to the first thing tomorrow right kids sit down I'm going to teach you about the Isle of Man here we go yeah those are my we favorite also questions. do we also do have cats with no tails oh wow okay that is that, that is the myth. thing Okay, I thought that was a myth. No, that is the thing. And do you know what is mad? When I did A level biology, my A level, but I sat in my exam and the genetic like cross diagram and the question was about the Manx mutation, about Manx cats. And I was like, no shit. I know about this. <laughs> yeah. I thought when you said I was sitting in biology yeah. class and the cat, I thought like, is the teacher going to chop off a cat's tail or something to make it look like a nice cat? <laughs> it's like, what the hell is she going to say? No, they, li- they literally just genetically don't grow tails. Okay, I didn't know that. Right, I have two things. I need to talk about mm-hmm. the Isle of Man tomorrow when I go in. Uh, yeah, Abby, story I, for me. yeah, definitely, yeah. Uh, Abby, I'll try this one. You can excuse my two eighty knowledge here. Um, you can choose between the Liberation Tower in Kuwait um, or the Spire in Dublin. Probably Kuwait Towers. <laughs> Kuwait <laughs> Towers is. I know. I just didn't know if you knew what the Liberation Towers were. Sorry, <laughs> I, 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 we I, don't call them that. I don't know what they are either. So. Yeah. Kuwait Tower, like, cool. I would probably say the Spire, to be honest. Okay, fair enough. There's probably probably less um, annoying people at the Kuwait Towers, but anyway, uh, Lucy, you can choose between uh, camel racing, which apparently is famous in Kuwait, or horse racing, which is famous everywhere in Ireland oh, and England. Oh, the, the races in England. Yeah, yeah, they entry or new market would be lovely now. I do uh, want to go to the camel races, races though, just for something to do. Oh, when I saw the yeah, picture, but I went, this looks, this looks fun. I said, I have to have to have a look at this. Yes, I did watch a bit of it. It was pretty funny. I uh, think the appeal of the day at the races is the food and the drink, and we just don't, yeah, don't have that. That's, we get them like a can of seven off the best at McDonald's. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Um, Abby, you can choose between, or either of you, Lucy, either you can choose between trap shooting, which is apparently famous in Kuwait, or paintballing. Paintballing <laughs> all the way. <laughs> Not you might say that. There okay, is paintballing this... here. Okay, I'll take that. Uh, I like that. This is definitely where I'm going to slip up with my pronunciations, but you can correct me. Um, Abby, you can choose between some food in Kuwait called Makbuz. Makbuz? M-A-C-H-B-O-O-S. Apparently, it's a traditional Kuwaiti dish. Wait, was it M-A-C? H-B-O-O-S. Oh, Lucy, it's the thing that you know they put in the pot and there's chicken on the bottom and then there's rice and then they rice flip it and then flip it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the Kuwait version of Birani. Yeah. Birani, yeah. Know, yeah. Birani, yeah. Okay. Birani. So Kuwaiti, Birani, or Irish stew? Oh, Irish stew all the way with a wee bit of ketchup on the top. Mm-mm-mm. Ketchup on the top. Ew. <laughs> yeah. I am yeah. not a brown sauce gal. I am a ketchup girl. Yeah. Through. Such and an Irish thing to do to put ketchup on top of it. Yeah. yeah. Stuff away from me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the last one, maybe I could change this one now. I've, as much as I've an, a ridiculously unnecessary knowledge of soccer from the past, I've no idea who this is, but apparently Kuwaiti's best soccer player is someone called Fatih Camille, who played in the 1982 World Cup. 
uh, or you can choose. Uh, oh, who do I know from the Isle of Man? That Wiggins guy, Bradley Wiggins, is he from the Isle of Man? Or, or the one, some, some, some cyclist. What's the cyclist guy? Yeah, Chris, cyclist. Yeah, isn't he from the Isle of Man? <laughs> Mark Cavendish. Cavendish, that's it. Yeah, he was and doing Peter well. Kenyuk. I remember. Yeah, Cavendish was doing well. I remember when I met the family in China. They were all about Cavendish, and I was like, I know cycling, but uh, I don't know this guy. So you can choose between the greatest Kuwaiti player ever, who I've never heard of, or uh, the, the, great, the great Mark Cavendish. The Manx Missile, is that what he's called? That's what he's called. Okay, didn't know that. Uh, and Abby, maybe you can choose between good old Fatty Camille or Down's great footballer, Benny Coulter. I'm going to have to ask, I'm literally going to voice to Omar after this, I'm like, Omar, who is the greatest soccer player ever to come out of Kuwait and see if he says this case? <laughs> The, the only name that came up when I googled uh, Kuwait, and normally I don't have to google too many soccer players, but Kuwait was a unique one, and it's Fatty Kamel. It looks like Camel with a K, for all I know. Um, Kamal. Kamal, 1982 yeah. World Cup, apparently, or the great Benny Coulter, of course, uh, Abby, you, even though you don't, not much GA, but you, you surely know Benny Coulter. Great, okay, we'll, we'll edit that part out where you don't so know. <laughs> So she's I, am, I am the worst person. Whenever you like, whenever I'm not like the first time. Whenever I ask you, is there any questions I need to look up? You're like, oh no, just when the club's founded, straight onto the website, straight <laughs> on. And I made the website. Like I updated it over the over summer, and nice. I still had to look up when it was founded and when it came back to life. <laughs> love it, love it. That's deadly. Yes. Um. So your jersey can be got on O'Neill's. I've definitely asked you that. And uh, is there anyone, Lucy, you want to give a shout out to back in? The famous Isle of Man, any of the great people there or anybody else you want to give a shout out to? Yeah, this probably won't be going out until like, oh, like uh, it was originally meant to be 10 clubs around the world and word of mouth spread and it's it's at 49 um, but it's currently. Flat, oh, wow. It's taken off and it's yeah. unreal. Like that group chat, like, you've got me in. It's so cool. Yeah, it's, it's so it was a bit mental. So people are getting involved. Yeah, I think it's just the GA clubs around the world, like, because I've, I've, as I said, I've been lucky to travel to like, you know, 100 odd countries or whatever, but they just they don't get a lot of recognition like like when i said to some of my mates it was like the guys the girls from kuwait are coming on and he went well, kuwait have a ga club and i was like well like, we, didn't, we didn't know that newcastle had one the other day but like suddenly Ku- kuwait is a big surprise like you know there's clearly one everywhere so yeah uh, no it's just been taken off great Speaking and of, hopefully yeah do you um have you contacted any clubs in vietnam I have had uh, Charlie from Saigon, uh, Gales was on, and I had the girls from Ho Chi Minh, uh, Nafina, Ho Chi Minh City. Uh, okay, because my a girl that I used to play netball with mm. in England moved out there and start, started playing GAA in September. Yeah. Um, so, and she plays for one of them. So I was just going to say, if you haven't, I can... What was her name out of interest? Send her a message. But uh, Her name's Emma. She only started this year, though, so she okay. probably wasn't in the, uh, like, I, in the chat. The, Four, the four four girls actually came on in the same classroom. They put up a flag in the classroom and came on in their jerseys, and it was pretty fun. Um, and then Char- Charlie from Saigon actually runs her own podcast as well, and we've been in touch most days. She's really she's from Kerry. She's really good fun, and she's she's mad as well. Like she would, I'd say, if you brought her out now, she would just she destroy the other team physically. She'd probably kill them. Um, and. <laughs> Kuwait would suddenly become this force to be reckoned with, you know, that they'd, they'd be like, oh, they're they're that team, you know, that uh, that just kill everyone. So, um, yeah, but no, it's going great, thankfully. So, um, yeah, Lucy, sorry, is there anyone you want to give a shout out to the F and I suppose you haven't seen anyone in a long time. So no, I haven't seen anyone yeah. in a long time. So because I haven't seen anyone and hopefully by the time this airs, I will be able to be with my yeah. family and um, I will hopefully play it with them. So I'll give a shout out to my dad because... When he comes out here, he said he was going to come to training and he said he was going to play with us. So shout out to my dad. And if we're listening to this, again, when, he next comes and, <laughs> when he next comes and visits, he has to come and play. <laughs> okay, sounds good, yes. And uh, Abby, anyone anyone in Bambridge or around Newry or anywhere? Hi, John. Um, yeah, hi, John. My dad will be like, Abigail. Um, I'm actually going to give a shout out to my dad's friend, Jer. Jer works with my dad. He bought a shirt off me last year. And he is literally the biggest fan I think I've got more than my parents because he sends my dad screenshots. He's like, Abigail's looking great. She's having a great time and he likes everything on Facebook. So thank nice. you very much, Jer. Your support is very much appreciated. Awesome. Love it. Yeah. Do you guys have a, I've only the Facebook page of the podcast. I don't use too much. The Instagram one is just kind of, kind of took off a little bit overnight, but do you have a Facebook page around there for the club as well or? 
Yeah, it's do, just but QA it tarps isn't, there. Okay. It isn't mm. massively used. It's mainly got like um we do direct new players and stuff towards yeah. it, but a lot of older members are on there as well. Just if mm. if things happen, we'll we'll put stuff on there and update them as well. It's just nice for some people that are maybe left the club a couple of years yeah. ago just to still mm. see what's going on. So awesome, yes. Um yeah. guys, it's been deadly talking to you. I'm sorry I kept you on so no, long, but um, much. I've loved no, it. No, yeah, no, it's been lovely to chat. <laughs> yeah, we're sorry I, for us. Like, yeah. We can- yeah, we can talk all night. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I, I could as well. Yeah. Whenever I'm like, Jack, I'm coming over. He's like, seriously? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Maybe next year you're going to be, are we, are we chill night? And he's like, great. <laughs> yeah, tell um, tell Alan Shearer, yeah, I'm glad Newcastle survived um, this season and hopefully they, they might finish 17th yeah. next year maybe to, you know, just to... Yeah, I don't really like. He said he was like, when we have kids, they're, uh, they're definitely going to be in, New- in a Newcastle top. And I was like, well, poor sods. Yeah, God loves them. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't envy any Newcastle fan. To be honest, it's, it's, it's a tough life, you know. So, um, but yeah, look, I, I'll let you guys go, and uh, I'll keep in touch with you, and uh, I'll, I'll send you my WhatsApp on that if you got any pictures. But yeah, drop us a WhatsApp anytime if you're looking to know the crack at home. I can, I can probably fill you in a bit quicker than your, uh, your Chinese whispers that goes on out there. But, um, <laughs> but I have to go to. Hang on. Uh, QA Towers. I have to go camel racing. Uh, I have to eat some Mac booze, whatever they are. Uh, and I also, yeah, I have to come play with you. And I also have to meet some guy called Fatty Kamel or Camille, um, who, who may or may not He's be not alive. He could be dead. <laughs> I can't I'm guarantee he's alive. Yeah. Hey, if, if he's still alive, I will be out to Kuwait to meet him. Uh, and I'll come out and I'll, I'll play on the roof. How high up is the roof out of interest? Three floors of a building. Oh, that's okay. That's all right. Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty shitty with heights. I won't lie. So um, yeah, three, three, four stories is okay. You <laughs> can't like... fall off. It's okay. It's fenced. Oh, it wouldn't yeah, matter to cool. me. Once I uh, going up the stairs would be enough to to hold me off. Um, I, to be fair, you to... gotta hold on. Those <laughs> stairs are a death trap. Okay. Also, in Kuwait, there's no such thing as health and safety. So that's all you need to know. <laughs> sounds, like, sounds like Ireland about fifty years ago. Sounds good. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, sadly, yeah. Uh, no, I'll drop you guys a, a message on Instagram now in a second. But um, yeah, it's been great to chat to you, and uh, definitely keep in touch. I'd love to, I'd love to keep in touch with you. Yeah, it'd be awesome. And I'll give you a shout when this um goes out. Out of this. But yeah, look, I'll keep in touch with you guys for sure. And uh, yeah, definitely, definitely send send us a message. Let us know how Kuwait's going. But um, I'll talk to you guys okay. soon, and, and take it easy. No worries. Yeah. Thanks very much. Thanks so much, guys. Yeah, I'll see you later. Bye. Take it easy. Bye bye. bye. Take it easy. Coming up the next day on the Loaf of Bread GA Global, we cut into our next slice. Yeah, we have a good mix, to be honest with you. Um, Fong, then, is uh, the, the one you heard about. Oh, yeah. The, I, the have Johnny's, to ask, you know? I have to ask about Fong. <laughs> Tell us about Fong. Yeah, yeah. So, Fong is amazing. Uh, um, we don't have a Komogi team yet, but uh, yeah. uh, over here, as long as it's challenges and stuff, um, we can play a bit of co-ed, like, but uh, once it's a, a USGA thing, you can't, like. But, um, so, for now, she's just holding her own with the men. But, uh, yeah, so Fong, um, that's her name. It's... Uh, P H O U N G, not quite like Patty yeah. Fong, but uh, yeah. but um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, she she's amazing. She picked it up, I think, I believe, in Atlanta, and she came down to Florida then, and uh, she just looked around online and and found the club. But um, she was she's a beast on the on the field, men or women, she could definitely hold, hold her own. Like and uh, and it would be then a uh, Chinese descent, but she's American as you get. Like so, yeah, she's yeah. a she's a tough one, a great player. Yeah, we're lucky to have her. And it's like, uh, would she drink pints? You know, she would if she got it, kind of person. Or she would if she got it. Now, to be honest <laughs> with you, you know, she would if she got it. Yeah, she's. Uh... I say a big thanks to Abby and Lucy, and make my way on to my next destination. And the next Monday on the Loaf of Bread GA podcast, Slice Twenty Three, I travel back to the USA and go from the Middle East heat to the Florida heat, as I hit up Jimmy from Ankaru in Galway and find out all about life in Orlando GA. We chat about the incredible GA crest the club has featuring Disney and Harry Potter, his works within Disney and theme parks, the famous Fong at the club and the two Johnnies, GA life back home in Galway versus Orlando, club rivalries, and the key issues like Disney or Universal, in sync or Boyzone, and much more. That's next Monday morning from 9am as I continue the journey with two slices a week. I'll see you at the arrivals hall, but until then, check out the various clubs on the Instagram page and see all the amazing work they do and some of the nicest GA gear going. Find the podcast on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter and on TikTok. Email loafofbreadpod at gmail.com 
or just simply hit the follow button and spread the word of the Loaf of Bread GA pod across the globe. Slonagy. <laughs>